Good morning. Good morning, Cultivate. Man, it is so exciting here this morning. And I've just been enjoying from the street all the way to the stage all the people that are serving and laughing and loving and taking pictures and eating Little Debbie cakes and all the things that are happening. I tell you, there's such a heart to serve here and such a passion for worship. And then there's an atmosphere of excellence. And I tell you, will you just give one another and all those that serve a great big hand right now? Yeah. And of course, I know none of that would not be possible without our lead team, pastors Brandon and Brandon, Danielle and Jen, and they may not be here right now, but they will watch this, I promise you. Let's give them a great big hand. Can we do that? Well, I've been anticipating and looking forward to being with you here, and I was with the Columbiana campus back in July, and since then I have spent seven weeks in Indonesia knowing that I would be here with you today. And I did something in Indonesia I've never done. I'm 58 years old, never done in my life. In fact, my wife could not believe that I did it when I showed her the videos and the pictures. I was there serving a church with one of your missionaries, Adam Lott. And, uh, and they have a, a, a lead team that consists of mostly single young adults in their 20s. And one day for staff day, they wanted to take me to a theme park called Funland. Now, I love theme parks. I love to walk around, eat the food, and watch everybody else ride the rides. But I do not ride rides. Never have in my life. I went with this young team and I'm walking around and, and every one of them, they have these barricades and I would stand behind the barricades. I would watch them ride the rides and before every ride, they would announce, we do not stop this ride for anyone. And there, the rides didn't last a minute to a minute and a half like they do here in the States. Their rides were three to five minutes long. And I would just stand there and watch those and watch those. And, and usually I get these knots in my stomach like I'll never do that. But I was getting these knots in my stomach about, man, I'm going to regret this. Besides last Sunday, they all these young people heard me preach, face your fears, you know. And here I am standing behind the barricade thinking, you ain't going to stop. I'm not getting on. <laughs> and, and the more I did it, two hours walking from ride to ride, then I started getting another knot in my stomach. I started thinking, I got a two-year-old and a four-year-old grandson. And I got to thinking, one day my grandkids are going to ride rides like this. And what am I going to do when that day comes? So after two years with all these knots, in, I mean two hours with all these knots in my stomach, I say, go back to the very first ride. And I rode all six of the rides in this theme park. I brought a video to show you about 45 seconds. telling you, I didn't just ride these rides. I kept my eyes open. I held my hands in the air. After I got on that first ride, there's an energy that got inside of me. And I, I mean, I, I just couldn't wait to get back home and post it all on social media to show everybody what I had done and to tell my family about it. And I'm going to tell you, I, I am so glad that I did not leave Indonesia with a regret. And I tell you that story this morning because I really want to talk to you about your experience with Christ and, and the life that God has planned for you. And it is a life on purpose. And that God wants you to come out from behind the barriers. Quit watching everybody else make a difference and live their purpose and, and live the adventurous life that God's planned for you. Overcome your fears. Don't let self-preservation 
cause you to miss the opportunities that God has for you in your life. And, and, and let me just tell you, it, it's true. When you really give your life to Jesus Christ, it never stops. It was never intended to be a religion where it was an event in your life with, filled with ceremonies and rituals and formulas. No, Christianity is about a relationship with Jesus that once you start, it never stops. And it gets better and better and better and more exciting than you could ever imagine in your life. In fact, Jesus said it like this. He'd been on the, on the earth for 33 years. He'd been doing all these miracles for three and a half years. Then he died on the cross for our sins and his followers thought he was gone. And then he pops through the walls one day and says, I'm alive, don't be afraid. I mean, can you imagine somebody popping through the wall and saying, don't be afraid? But anyway, and he did this for 40 days. He'd pop in and out of walls. And, and then this day, he was going to get on a cloud and just rise up into heaven and be with God for the next 2,000 plus years. But just before he did that, he looked at all of his followers in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and verse 5. And this is what he said to them. Don't leave Jerusalem. But wait here until you receive the gift I told you about, the gift the Father, his Father, our Heavenly Father promised. Watch what he says. For John baptized you in water, but in a few days from now. Now, they had already had all these great experiences, but he says, yet there's still more to come. It's a continuous thing. It's not a one-time deal. There's more to come. In a few days from now, you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And really this word baptize is exactly what happened to me in Indonesia when I got on my first ride. It was the initiation into a life now I'll never be the same. I can't wait for my grandkids to grow up so I can ride rides with them. This word baptize, it really means to, to plunge. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, about taking the plunge, coming out from behind the barricades of fear and doubt and unbelief. And what are there other things in your life may be keeping you from stepping up, going all in? This word baptized also means to be immersed in. I mean to fully give yourself to it. In fact, this word is found many times in the New Testament. And I believe the, the New Testament, and I'm going to show you where it teaches about four different ways you can go all in, take the plunge, and be immersed into the life that God has called you into. In fact, God planned your life. God gifted you and gave you certain talents and chose you and bought you back and died for you and rose again for you and gave you power to live inside of you because he has such a great assignment and such a plan for you. He wants you to leave a mark with your life on this planet. And the first baptism that the Bible tells us about is to be baptized into Christ. Baptized into Christ. The Bible says it this way in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27. For all of you were baptized into Christ. Now watch this. And have clothed yourselves with Christ. It's not an event. You were immersed in. It wasn't just a, a little decision you made one time, but that we might clothe ourselves, be immersed in, take the plunge into the purposes of Jesus Christ, into the principles of Jesus Christ, into the presence of Jesus Christ, this authentic, organic, ever-growing life of following him. In fact, salvation is, is instant. But following Jesus Christ is a 24-hour a day, seven day a week, 52 weeks a year for the rest of your life filled with new experiences that God has planned for you. It's not, a, it's not an a la carte menu where you take what you like and leave what you don't like, but it's where you say, Jesus, I give my whole life to live the life you've planned for me. A couple of years ago, me and my daughter, Destiny, we're on our way to Cameroon, Africa, and we were in the airport in Miami changing planes and with a layover. 
and I was wanting to get some information, so I'm standing. There's a ticket counter about where the first row is here, and, and there's a man standing over here. He's about 6'8", weighs about three, 325 pounds, and, and he's kind of leaning on the counter, but the lady is standing here, so I'm stepping back to make sure, but I wasn't sure, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he turns around and he starts looking at me and giving me these dirty looks. Next thing I know, he's moving over and then he stands up, you know, and I'm looking at him. And then he just starts cussing me and accusing me of trying to break in line. And who did I think I was? And why did I think I could do that? And then he said something about my mother. I didn't even know he knew my mother. I'm getting mad, I'm getting embarrassed, everybody's looking at my daughter's with me, and so I'm just, I'm like, if I don't walk away from here, something's going to be bad here, you know, and I walk away, and, and my daughter's with me, and I'm thinking, God, what do I do now? Everybody's looking at me, and, and I don't know what to do, and suddenly, suddenly, these principles of Jesus come into my mind that I had read so many times and didn't fully understand. They're found in Luke chapter six and these are the words of Jesus, what Jesus said. But to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. I thought, I don't want to bless this guy. I want to bless him out. I don't, want to, I don't want to pray for him. I want to hurt him. Come on, somebody. But I just started praying. And the more I got to praying for this guy, the more that I believe God began to speak to me how to pray for him. I began to say to my daughter, babe, we're not going to get mad. We're not going to get bitter. We have no idea what this guy's been through. You know, he may have been abused as a child, abandoned by his father. He may have been bullied growing up his whole life. There's something in this guy. And I start praying for God. To me. We go and we get on the plane and I'm holding my daughter's hand and I'm on the aisle seat and she's next to me and we're just praying and tears are coming down my face and here comes this guy down the aisle on the same plane I'm sitting on and guess where he sat? Right across the aisle from me. But I wasn't afraid and I wasn't angry and I wasn't bitter. I had found an opportunity to bless those who had cursed me and pray. As I'm sitting on this plane riding, I'm saying, God, tell me what's going on. I believe the Spirit of God spoke this to me. Nobody has ever prayed for him. I allowed this to happen in your life because I wanted somebody to pray for this man. See, that's, that's what it is when you start talking about immersing your life. Who do you need to forgive that you're still holding on to a grudge? Maybe God is speaking to you. Maybe there's a principle Jesus is saying, come, come out from behind the barriers. You've got it all in your mind how you think it'll work, but you have no idea what I've planned for you. You will never be the same. The second baptism we read is to be baptized in water. We experience that in both experiences this morning, in both campuses today. And it's exciting. And, and it is a way of marking and having a memorial in our life. But I want to tell you it's much, much more than that. In fact, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, and it says this right here, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Now notice it says you were buried with him. You died with him. This is a way of saying my old life, my old ways are over. In fact, friend, this is the way that we obey Jesus Christ. Do you understand the very first commandment that Jesus gave to you once you accepted Christ was to be baptized in water? And, and I'm just saying to you here this morning that, that many of us have been saved. Oh, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to save me and redeem me. He says, okay, I did. Now I want you to be baptized. No, thank you. I mean, I want you to ask yourself how that'd work in your home. If you told your child, hey, I want you to go clean your room up. They kept coming back every morning, crawling up in your lap saying, oh, daddy, I love you. Oh, mama, you're the greatest mom in the world. Have you cleaned your room yet? No, but I love you. And I, I... 
Yet that's what many of us has done with water baptism in our life. In fact, I'd like to stop right here, ask every one of you to take out your connect card in your worship guide. Right now, just take it out. If you're taking notes, you, you, it'll just help you take notes a little better on that card. Because you see, on this card is a place for you to say, I'd like to be baptized in water. And on the first Sunday of January, you too could join. And I want to tell you what's so great about it. It is, it is one way that you can absolutely know I just obeyed Jesus Christ in my life. See, delayed obedience is the same as disobedience. And because Jesus says we were buried with him in baptism, I believe that many believers, even though you know Jesus, even though you have a relationship with him, you're still struggling with obeying Jesus in other areas of your life. Obeying him in your finances, obeying him in your ministry, in your time. Maybe you're still struggling with things in your life from your old life. Maybe it's because you've never took the very first obedient step that Jesus challenged you and commanded you to take. See, it is supernatural. Now it's just water. But let me tell you, when you understand the power of baptism, it's more than going down dry and coming up wet. When you obey God in one area of your life, it releases a supernatural momentum for you to be able to obey God in other areas of your life. The Bible says it again like this in Romans chapter 6. It says, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Dead people don't argue with you. Come on, can I have an amen? The third baptism that the Bible speaks about is to be baptized in the body of Christ. Baptized in the body of Christ. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says this. It says, each of us are a part of one body of Christ, but the Holy Spirit has fitted us all together into one body. We've been baptized, look at this everybody, into Christ's body. You didn't just join a church. You, you don't just show up. Really, you didn't choose this church. You may think you did, but God chose this church for you. He planted you here, and the Holy Spirit is fitting you in this body. Maybe, maybe you still have not fully immersed yourself in Cultivate Church. Maybe you just show up on Sunday morning and sit on a chair and you enjoy the worship and you listen to the, to the message. But let me tell you something. You will never find the fulfillment and the purpose that God put you here for until you go all in, until you take the plunge, until you go to Roots and get in a small group and get on a C team and start allowing Allowing yourself to be used in this body. You see, God placed you here because he knew everybody else that was going to come here. And he put gifts in them so that their gifts would make a difference in your life. But if you hold yourself out, you're never going to receive the very things that God put you in this body for. And hey, can I just tell you something else? God put gifts in you that the people in this body need. And you're robbing the other people in this body of your gifts as long as you hold yourself behind the barriers. I don't know what your journey's been like, what other churches you've been to, but you need to come out from behind the barriers and you need to jump in the ride of Cultivate Church and allow God to immerse you into this body and take the ride of your life. God has things for you you never dreamed and never imagined that he wants to do in your life. In fact, the more you serve, and serving, guys, is just the rent we pay for being alive. Can I have an amen? You're here to make a difference. You're here to serve other people. But when you serve others, you end up getting help yourself. The Bible says this in Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25, and I want to share it with you out of the message paraphrase. The world of the generous gets larger and larger but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed and those who help others are helped. The very things you need, 
you will find as you give yourself to the other people in this local body. I want to challenge you. Come out from behind the barricades and do it. Do it with your finances. I know, I know sometimes we're, we're so concerned about meeting our needs. Let me tell you what God's concerned about, developing and growing our faith. He said the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Years ago, me and my wife were, were looking forward to our 25th wedding anniversary. It was going to come around in 2007, and, and uh, we didn't have much of a wedding. We had no honeymoon. We couldn't afford anything. Our families couldn't afford anything. And so my wife started looking to that 25th, and she said, I want a full church wedding. She said, I want a full sit-down rehearsal dinner and reception dinner for all the people that come. I want to go to Hawaii for two weeks. And I'm saying, okay, babe, we figured out what it costs is going to be $10,000. We started saving. It took us several years. January of 2007, we had that $10,000. Our anniversary was April the 16th of that same year. Well, that January, I flew over to Ecuador with missionary Bill McDonald. He spoke here before. He's a member of our church and a part of our church family. And we had helped him start a ministry. It was only a year old. When I was sitting on the board at that board table, we discovered the employees had not been paid for six weeks. Some of them had sold their cards. They so believed in that ministry there in Ecuador that even though they couldn't be paid, they sold their own cars, were riding the bus so that they could be a part of it. When I heard that, something happened down inside of me, and I started ugly crying. Do y'all know what an ugly cry is? It's when you're spitting and sputtering and heaving and stuff's running out of your nose. You'll be all right. You, you'll be all right for lunch today, I promise. I gave that $10,000 away. That was a couple of weeks before I got home, and two weeks later before I had the nerve to tell my wife, she can still tell you where we were riding down the highway when I did it. We're riding in the, in the truck and I'm driving and I just start. <coughs> she said, what's wrong? I said, I got to tell you something. I'm just snotting and everything again. And I'm, I'm trying to catch my breath. She looked at me and she said, you gave all of our money away, didn't you? I said, yeah, baby, I'm so sorry. She said, it's okay. God will take care of it. I don't have time to go into all of it this morning, but I want to tell you something. When April the 16th came, we had that beautiful wedding. We had that beautiful reception. We had a week on Maui given to us. We had a week on Wahoo given to us. We had two first-class round-trip tickets given to us. When we left, we had $3,000 in our pocket, and we had $10,000 back in the bank. See, 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 what, what are you missing by staying behind the barricade? I tell you, you can take pretty good care of yourself, but you can never take as good as care of yourself as God can take care of you. Why, since then, I've been to 46 countries of the world, preached the gospel. I've, I've stood before prime ministers and vice presidents. I've preached in little huts in the Ecuadorian jungle and in a 25,000-seat sanctuary in Surabaya, Indonesia. I was in Pakistan when the earthquake hit, Thailand when the tsunami hit. I've had a, an adventurous life. Listen, I don't have a... High school diploma, I have no college education, but I have a God who says the world of the generous will get larger and larger. Here's the fourth baptism. It's baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, don't get scared. Don't get afraid. I don't know what your history is and what you've seen and heard and what people told you, but the Holy Spirit is not goofy. People are goofy. And they'd be goofy with the Holy Spirit or without the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I want you to open your life to an immersion. And here's why he said it. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he said, but you'll receive power. Power. And you'll be able to talk to people about me in Shelby County and Alabama and the United States and all over the world. Now, this has nothing to do with heaven. If you're born again, the Spirit of God lives in you. 
This is all about your purpose and your assignment and you making a difference and leaving a mark in this life. And you're not gifted enough, educated enough, experienced enough, or talented enough to pull it off on your own. We need the power of God in our lives to do it. A supernatural power, not a goofy power, a power that's beyond us to be able to do it. I, I, I have a phrase, a mantra. You can steal it from me if you want to. I say it every morning of my life during my devotional time. Every morning I say, Holy Spirit, if you don't, I can't. Holy Spirit, if you don't, I can't. And before I speak, I've already said it twice this morning. Before I ever speak, I say this. Holy Spirit, lift me out of myself into that other self that's greater than myself. I'm in that other self right now. And I'm not, well, I may be a little goofy. Okay. I'm telling you, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because all over Shelby County are people that are stressed and depressed and obsessed and oppressed and even possessed. And God wants to use you and I to make a difference in their lives. This past July, I went to Cameroon, Africa again. I got to speak in the prime minister's cabinet to bring reconciliation. You can Google it. There's a great confusion and civil war going on there right now. While I was there, they asked me to speak at a women's conference. Not a church conference, a professional women's conference where they were going to have speakers from Dubai and Portugal and all over Africa. And I was the only man speaker. And I was the only white one there. I said, what do you want me to speak at a women's conference for? They said, you can't preach. They gave me the subjects they wanted me to speak on. But then they said this, but you can share your faith at the each end of each one of your session. I said, that's all I need. I said, Holy Spirit, come. Lift me out of myself into that other self that's greater than myself. And after speaking three times, 80 professional women had given their heart to Jesus Christ. Two of them were Congress women. Yeah, go ahead. Two of them were Congress women, and two of them were Muslim Congress women that I'm still in touch with on social media, and they're still living for Jesus Christ in Cameroon, Africa. Now give the Lord a great big hand. <laughs> Yours will be different than mine. Your places will be different. Your people will be different. But God's got some stories for you to tell you've never dreamed of. Here's the way he put it in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It's our family's favorite verse of scripture. My wife planted this verse in all of my kids. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you come out from behind the barricade open your life up and say holy spirit come lift me out of myself into that other self that's greater than myself hey you have this connect card in your hand what is god speaking to you which one of these baptisms do you need to open your life up how immersed do you need to get in the body of christ I believe that God is speaking to all of us and that every one of us can take some step today. In fact, on both sides of these cards are steps I talked about this morning. But I believe for some people in this room, the greatest step is the very first step. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads all over this room and just close your eyes for just a moment. And once again, I'm going to ask you to just have this Connect card in your hand. Because today the step you need to take may be to open your life to Jesus Christ. Accept him as your Lord and your Savior. I want you to know Jesus Christ died for your sin. All the anger of God, all the wrath of God, all the judgment of God. He took it out on Jesus so that 
today you could be accepted by God. God loves you. He's not mad at you. He's mad about you. And today, this is your opportunity to hope in your heart to Jesus Christ. This is what I'm going to ask you to do. If that's your decision today, I'm going to ask you to mark it right now on that connect card where it says, I'm committing my life to Christ. If you'll do that and drop it in the bucket when you leave, prayer teams from both campuses will pray for you this week and they'll send you a letter in the mail telling you how to take some next steps in your relationship with Jesus. Because once you start, it's never going to stop. In fact, I want to lead us in a prayer. And I'm going to ask everybody in this auditorium to pray it out loud with me. I don't care if you've known Jesus longer than I've been born. Or if you've been on the C team here ever since Cultivate started. I want you to help me as I help others make this decision today. Will you say it? Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. I am a sinner. I need a Savior. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. I give you the rest of my life. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for choosing me. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Okay, cultivate. Can we put our hands together? Come on, let's celebrate. People said yes to Jesus.